Hello there, this is David Hillier here and I am going to give you a quick video on how to value equities. Now this is the first of a series of videos that I'll be recording and this video in particular just looks at the theory, looks at the, the simple approach to coming up with an estimate of the value of an equity or a stock or a share. I'll be looking at three different variations on a theme in evaluation uh, and I think all of you by the end of this video will know how to, to use these. This is linked into my um, uh, blog post that I put up recently on how to value equities in under five minutes. But this video goes back to the very basics to, to show you some of the, the fundamental concepts underlying the theory. So it's the concepts that we're looking at today. And um, I want to start off by differentiating between dividends and capital gains. Now, both of those are income uh, that re uh, is received by shareholders. Dividends are paid by the company. And they're paid regularly, whether that's every quarter, every six months, or every year. And capital gains are what you get when you sell your equity. So there's two types of income. What you receive regularly from a company, we call that the dividends, and what you get when you sell your company. Now, I'm just going to use a very simple example here. So let's assume that the value of an equity is £100 and, and, and effectively you only have one share so the value of the company is £100. So the company earns an extra £100 in cash. So you've got the, the value of the company is £100, you have the additional cash of £100. So what's the, uh, the size of your portfolio? And we're going to look at three different scenarios. One where the company pays everything out in the form of dividends that's the option A. The other one is the company doesn't pay any dividends at all. Uh, it just keeps all the money, and that's option B here. And then the other one, the third one, is where the company pays half of that money out in the form of dividends and retains the rest of the cash for its investment. So looking at the very first case where you pay 100% of your money out in dividends, that's you're paying £100 in cash. They start off with the price of 100 You've got dividends of 100, that's the, the cash. In terms of your portfolio, you've got the, the value of the equity being 100 and you've got the dividends. So your return is 100 pounds, but the price hasn't changed. So you've got a return of 100, but you've got no change in price. And that's because you have received 100 pounds in dividends. Let's look at the second case where you earn 100 pounds. Uh, so you've got 100 pounds in cash. You don't pay anything out in dividends, so you're retaining the um, the earnings in the company. So, given that that's the case, the value of your portfolio is clearly still 200, but the price doubles. The price goes from 100 to 200, and that's your capital gain. So, you've seen a price change uh, within that period, but you don't receive any dividends. So although your value of your portfolio is the exact same, the prices are different and, uh, and you also the, the amount you receive in dividends is different. And then we look at the third case where you're paying 50% out in dividends. So you receive £50 in dividends, you retain £50, so the value of the company has to go up by £50. So your overall portfolio is £200. Now, why am I asking that? I'm asking that because... The, what we're looking at here is looking at, well, okay, what, what do you receive as an investor? You don't need to sell the equity. So given that you don't need to sell the equity, you're, you're just holding it, the only cash that you receive year on year is the, the dividends. And that's what we're going to use when we, we look at the theory. Now, let's start off. Let's assume that you buy an equity. And so you buy it at price uh, at time zero, so P0. And uh, during the year, you receive a dividend. So you get the dividend at, at time one. And you sell the equity at time one. So this time you are receiving cash. Given that the dividend and the, the amount you get uh, occurs one year from now, we've got to discount that back. And we discount it back by one plus R because it's only one period in the future. 
And so the sum of the discounted value of the dividends plus the discounted value of the price that you get must equal the price today. And so the price today is that formula that you've got there. Now what happens if you don't sell the equity at time one, but you actually sell it at time two? Well, first of all, we want to know how we calculate the price at time one. The price at time one is the discounted value of the dividend at time two, and the price at time two. So you're just selling the equity at time two. And given that the price at time one also appears here in the first equation, then we can substitute this um, formula here into price at time one in order to get a price at time zero. So here you're actually assuming that you buy the equity at time zero and you sell at time two. And you can see the dividend uh, time one, that's here, divided by one plus r, so you're only capturing that, plus the dividend at time two, plus the price at time two, divided by one plus r, and that is then divided by one plus r again. So that's one plus r squared. So we have the price at time zero is equal to the dividend at time one, divided by one plus r, plus the dividend at time two, divided by one plus r squared, plus uh, the price at time 2 divided by 1 plus r squared. And you can go forward on that in terms of just keep on going forward every year, substituting, for example, for price 2, the price at time 2 is equal to the dividend at time 3 divided by 1 plus r plus the price at time 3 divided by 1 plus r. And that can be substituted into this equation, which in turn is substituted into this equation to get uh, a bigger uh, formula. And so that formula would just basically go to time 3. So the price at time 0 is equal to the discounted value of the dividend at time 1, plus the discounted value of the dividend at time 2, plus the discounted di value of the dividend at time 3, plus the discounted value of the dividend of the price at time 3. And that can go on into infinity. So that you have an infinite series. And for those of you who are mathematicians, you know that, well, you can simplify uh, an infinite series like this by uh, using um, a shortcut. And this is what we're going to do. And so I am going to talk about three patterns here. So we're going to look at the case where dividends don't change. They're just the same. So dividend at time one is equal to dividend at time two is equal to dividend at time three. We're going to look at a, an, a case where the dividends grow at a constant rate. Now, there's a theoretical justification for that. It's uh, that managers want to show constant growth to smooth their earnings increases. They don't want to, to surprise the market. So, you know, if you get, like, say, really good earnings in one year, you don't want to just increase your dividend by an awful lot. Uh, because the next year you might have to reduce it. So managers like to just keep it smooth, smooth increase year on year, and many companies do that. But the third case, which is a case that you find in small companies, companies that are going through a very high growth period, or maybe companies that have got a potential R&D product that's going to appear in a few years' time, it's you have two different periods of growth. So you might have very high growth for a short period, followed by a more sustainable growth rate. Or alternatively, you've got very low growth, followed by uh, a sustainable growth rate. And that could be an R&D, a research and development company. So we're looking at three different scenarios. So let's start uh, off by looking at the graphs and what the dividends look like over time. So when you've got zero growth, the formula that we end we use is the perpetuity formula. And you'll have seen the perpetuity formula in a previous video. That's just where we say C divided by R is equal to the present value. Because we're dealing in equities, the dividend at time one, which is equal to the dividend at time two, time three, time four, the price today is equal to the dividend at time one divided by R. And that's the perpetuity formula. And these are the dividends that you're seeing here. They don't change. It's the exact same dividend year on year. So there's no growth in the dividend. In the constant growth model, the dividends are growing at a certain rate every period. 
So it's maybe, let's say, grows at 5% every period uh, forever. And there, we're using the growing perpetuity shortcut formula. So the, and that's this one here, which is the price at time zero is equal to the dividend at time one. Now, this shortcut always requires that the first dividend is one period from now. So that's at time zero. That dividend is at time one. And we divide it by R, the discount rate, minus G, the growth rate. And this is known as the dividend growth model. It's just a term that, that we use. Now, the third type is where you're looking at, and I'll, I'll go through this one in, in detail and step by step, where you have a high growth rate, so you can see the growth is growing very fast, and then a low growth rate, which is sustainable forever. So that growth rate goes on forever, similar to the, the constant growth rate that goes on forever and the zero growth rate, which goes on forever. And that formula looks very scary, but I'm going to show you how to do it step by step so you don't need to remember the formula. So let's look at the, the zero growth first. With the zero growth, well, we've got the price is equal to the dividend at time one, divided by one plus r, plus the dividend at time two, divided by one plus r. And given that the dividend at time two is equal to the dividend at time one, and the dividend at time three is equal to the dividend at time one, then we can use the perpetuity formula to get the shortcut, which is the price today, is equal to the dividend at time one, divided by r. And here's a, a simple example. A company is expected to pay a dividend of three euros next year. The dividend is going to stay f the same forever, so there's no growth rate. The discount rate is 10%. So what's the price of the equity? Well, the price is just the dividend at time one divided by R, which is equal to three divided by 0 0.1, which is equal to 30 euros. Let's look at the same thing now, but with a growth rate. So this is the dividend growth uh, model. You have a dividend getting paid of three euros next year, the exact same. Uh, but this time the dividend is going to grow at 5% per annum forever. So the last time it was no growth rate, this time it's 5% per annum. And the uh, appropriate discount rate is 10%. That's the exact same as before. So what's the price? Well, this time it's the price is equal to the div at time 1 divided by r minus g. So it's 3 divided by 0.1 minus 0 0.05. So that gives us a price of 60 euros. So the price is actually double because of the growth rate. And we will come back to that in a future video looking at these growth opportunities and how you can, you can value those growth opportunities in a company. Now let's look at the difficult one. So the difficult one is where you have differential growth. And... We, we start off by saying that the dividend per share is uh, one year from today, so time one is equal to 115. And over the next four years, the dividend is going to grow at 15% per annum. So you can see that you got year one, uh, that's first year, second year, third year, and the fourth year. And this is growing at a rate of 15% per annum. So 1.15, if we multiply that by 1 plus 0.15, 15% is a growth rate, you end up getting a dividend of 1.3225. And if you multiply that by 1 plus G, you end up getting an, a dividend at time 3 equal to 1.52. Now, when you get to year 5, because remember, this growth rate only goes for 4 years, the growth rate then is lower, it's at 10%. So, that, but that goes on forever. So, that is effectively a growing perpetuity starting in year six, or it's starting in year five, but the first one, the first dividend you're looking at is in year six. So that growth rate is uh, growing from year five, where the first dividend is at year six, and that's going to be an important thing. So how do we value this? Well, there's a number of steps. First thing we're going to do is we, we, we take the, the high growth period, the beginning period, and we basically find the present value of each of these dividends. So it's just the present value of each of these dividends because effectively we want to find the value of those dividends here. So we're going to calculate the present value of the first five dividends. Now the second stage is we're going to find the present value of this dividend series, the one that starts at year six. Okay, so the growth rate of 10% kicked in We've got the dividend at year six. 
And we're going to calculate the present value of that perpetuity, that growing perpetuity. And once we've done that, we'll have the present values of these dividends and the present value of this big dividend stream. And we add them together to get the price. So it's, it's fairly straightforward. It's just as uh, if you try to explain that in a, in a formula, uh, it's, it looks quite scary. But uh, doing it step by step, it's straightforward. So we're now going to do that. Let's, let's start off by calculating the present value of each of these dividends. Okay, so that's in the high growth rate phase. So the first year, the dividend is 1.15. We're going to discount that. Okay, so what is the, the discount rate? The discount rate is 15%. See, so at the bottom, we've got a discount rate of 15%. So 1.15 divided by 1 plus 0.15 is equal to 1. Now, we've got a growth rate of 15% every uh, year. You can see that the dividends will grow at 15% per year for four years. So that 1.15 is going to grow to 1.3225. And we're going to discount that back by 1 plus r to the power 2, 1 plus r squared. And given our discount rate is 0.5, it's going to be 1.15 squared. And we end up with a present value of 1 again. Now, I've, I've set this up so that we can get present values of 1 for all of these because the growth rate is the same uh, year on year. And because we're discounting by 15%, uh, you end up getting this uh, 1111. So the present value of the first five uh, dividends is equal to 5 euros. It's just a sum of these. Let's now look at the second part. And the second part is we're going to be uh, calculating the present value of this dividend stream. Now the very first dividend is in year 6. So if we're going to use the shortcut formula, the shortcut formula says that the first dividend has to occur one year from now. So if we, our first dividend occurs in year six, that means we're finding the value of that perpetual dividend stream as at year five. Okay, do you see that? Because if the first dividend occurs one period from now, and we're finding the present value of all of these using the dividend growth model, we're finding the value at time five. And that's what we're doing here. Our dividend at time six is 2.2125. We're dividing by r minus g, so it's 0.15, and the growth rate in the second period is 10%, so it's 0.1, which gives us a value of 44.25. However, that is the value at time 5, not the value at time 0. So we have to discount that back at the discount rate to time 0. So it's 44.25, that's the, the value at time 5, divided by 1.15 to the power 5 gives us a value of 22. So the present value of all the dividends is 5 plus 22, which gives us a value of 27. So that is a very quick summary of all three methods using the, the perpetuity formula of uh, valuing a zero growth equity, a constant growth equity, and a differential dividend growth equity. Fairly straightforward, and in future videos we're going to be exploring where R comes from, where G comes from, and I'll also be showing you how to use real data to value equities. So, thank you very much for listening. Uh, I hope that was useful, and I'll see you again. Thank you.